but she's done a lot of work. I'm so grateful for her and her representation here in this community and the way that she challenges each of us as individuals. At this moment, though, I'd like to welcome another individual who continues to show up um, and acknowledge that your presence is powerful, that actions speak louder than words, and that Cuyahoga Falls also has taken great strides as a community and yet has more work to do. We are grateful for the work that he has done and the work that he has yet to do uh, as a civic leader here at Cuyahoga Falls. Thank you so much to, Rev er, to Pastor D. I'm welcoming all kinds of clergy <laughs> today. But we're doing ministry together, right? <laughs> Mayor John Walters, thank you so much for being here. Could you come forward? Thank you very much, Debbie. Thanks for coming out on this national holiday. Yeah. Thank you, and, and I want to thank the organizers that put all this together. The timing is absolutely perfect. The meeting is perfect as we honor the Hans Parkers today. So thank you very much. I know there's a lot going on in the cemetery today. There's three burials coming uh, shortly this afternoon, so we want to be respectful of them as well. Uh, we'll probably see a lot of activity, a lot more cars than we have now. So thank you very much. This is a huge deal. But we always have more work to do, right? We're, we're always working to make it better, and this is a great step. So thank you very much to the organizers and the Hans Parkers and all our forefathers that came before us. Thank you very much. And I know that Mayor Walters is not the only elected official who has made it a point to be present here today. If you are also here representing your community as an elected official in service, would you just raise your hand so that we can acknowledge your presence and, and share some gratitude. Thank you so much. Sorry, I'm short. I'm not used to being in the way like that. <laughs> I'm Pastor Debbie Sachs. I serve as part of the community here in Cuyahoga Falls as well as pastor at First Christian Church in Cuyahoga Falls. Thank you for that reminder. Um, I don't feel that my presence here today is, uh, is what's most important for us to celebrate and recognize, so I'm not always mindful of that. I appreciate you. Hello, hello, hello. Hey. My name is Sunny Matthews. I am proud to be a Cuyahoga Falls resident. And um, I say that because we are honoring Cuyahoga Falls residents today. So I'm so grateful for you all for being here. I want to thank my baby for being here. <laughs> and I, I want to especially thank who we have coming first. Her name is India Joy Rush. She is a mom of two, two black boys and two black girls. My, her passion for music started when she was just three years old. Y'all, she can play the acoustic guitar. She's been doing that since she was 13 years old. She has been on the Apollo with her family before, traveled nationally with her family before to sing. She's been a construction worker. She's been a well, tattoo artist now. She applied and went through the process of being a police officer, realized it wasn't for her. She is what I call someone of all, all, all trades. She is a jack of all trades, a master of many. I want to introduce you to my fellow podcaster, we have a podcast called uh, Rubber City Resistors, and her name is India Joy Rush. Will you bless us? Thank you. This is my first time singing ever in Latin August. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here today. Seriously, it means a lot to even be here on the stage and to be in front of all of you guys. Just going to sing Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did! 
that grace will be the hour I first believed. The Lord has promised good to me. His words, my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. When we've been here 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no last days to sing God's praise. Then when we first begun. It's not out of place for me to say amen. amen. So if that's in you as well, amen. Uh, thank you, India, for calling down the sun, singing it down today for us as we do continue on this journey. Uh, Today we also continue to acknowledge that we have partners across many different communities, many different services, many different callings in our work towards justice, for without justice there can be no peace. One of our servant leaders in Cuyahoga Falls who understands this work and has worked diligently across various vocations and health ministries in her mindfulness on... Uh, the environment, and energy, and sustainability, as well as as part of the revitalization that has happened with our downtown Calga Falls partnership and the work there to also make this um, even more vibrant space and a more inclusive space, acknowledging that that is where we experience the fullness of life as individuals and as a collective community. Mary Nichols Rhodes holds um, a BA in communications, an MBA from Walsh. She is a certified executive of assisted living. She um, has a favorite quote that she wanted to share with us. It says, how wonderful it is that nobody needs to wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome her now. for being here. Um, welcome everyone to our great city, to Ward 4, which uh, this cemetery is uh, sitting in. Uh, my name is Mary Nichols Rhodes and I'm the city councilwoman for Ward 4 right here. Uh, I represent the people of my ward, but also the people of this great city. And I have to say that as we go forward, things just keep getting better and better. Yes. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Welcome to Oakwood Cemetery. We are sitting on 23 beautiful acres of, it is gorgeous. There are a lot of rhododendrons, beautiful trees. There's so much peace and tranquility here. But what this also holds is a lot of history. Uh, this Oakwood Cemetery was established in 1834, so it's full of history. Many founders and settlers are buried here, and also the decades of people who lived their lives and contributed to our Cauga Falls and, uh, community, including the Hans Parkers, whom we honor today. I would like to thank the Lady Cemetery Association of Oakwood Chapel for allowing us to use this space, this chapel today. Uh, the Cemetery Association was established in 1888 and they dedicated this chapel in 1898 as a service to our community to all faiths. And we thank you today for the support. Earlier this year, local historian Jerry Wilcox Holland shared research she and others had done on the history of John and Emily Hans Parker and expressed a desire to properly honor them and mark their graves with a monument. I shared this information with local community member, author, motivational speaker, and co-founder of Dimensions of Isms, Sonny Matthews, 
and the first thing she said was, let's do this. For those of you who know Sunny, you know how smart I was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to contact Sunny. Anyway, on our first three-way call between um, Sunny, Jerry, and I, the positive energy was palpable. And so I thank you both, Jerry and Sunny, because there's a lot of hard work that happened behind the scenes to make today's event become a reality. Today is a celebration. It's a celebration of those who came before us whose stories have not yet been told. It's a celebration of making our history more complete, a celebration and commemoration of Juneteenth, a celebration of our community coming together to make history with hearts full of love for healing. And today, as a comment that was written by an author named Tim Wise, today we celebrate these steps on the road to something better. I know that we have all been resisting the urge to applaud for Sunny already, <laughs> repeatedly. So we're just gonna go ahead and properly introduce her now. Kenyana Sunny Matthews follows her heart in all things. She is a woman of passion. She is a powerful force in this community and in the lives of all those whom she has touched. We are fortunate that she has fallen in love with the community here in Cuyahoga Falls and calls it home. Sunny is a mother, a community leader, an advocate, an organizer, an inspiration, and though she hates it when I say it, a prophetess. <laughs> she is passionate about affecting appreciable change, whether it's through her writing, her speaking, providing diversity and inclusion training, pushing for policy change, or supporting candidates that move us closer to finally having a just world for all people. And if something powerful is happening in Cuyahoga Falls for these things, I guarantee you that Sunny is there, that she has been a part of it, and that she has invited others to it. I am so, so grateful for this woman who is always making room at the table, even if it means she's got to build her own damn table, <laughs> Sunny Matthews. Thank you. Thank you. So I've been, I've read, I wrote like three things. I wrote like three different speeches. I don't know how to express what this moment means to me. I don't know how to express what this moment means for black folks. I don't know what it means to, like how do I express what this moment has to mean for John and Emily? I want you to know they were not slaves. They were people. They were enslaved at a point, but they were people. I want you to know that they were Cuyahoga Falls residents that they made their way from the South after the ending of civil, the Civil War to Cuyahoga Falls, that they chose to bless us with all of their smiles, their joys, their love. Y'all, they called him Moses. They referred to him as Moses, and I am so grateful that I get to stand here and honor him today. Today is a special day because it's Juneteenth, the day we acknowledge truth. See, for me, this moment is not just about honoring John and Emily. This moment is about honoring all of those who came before us, all of those who built this country, all of those who blood, sweat, and tears are baked into the soil because of the work they did. For me, putting up these stones means so much. I want a chance to say you matter. I want to say a chance to say I stand on your shoulders. I want a chance to say I appreciate what you had to do. Can you imagine choosing to leave all that you know for the chance of better? They found each other here. They came alone. And they buried when they were buried, they were alone. That's why they have no gravestones. So we get to correct that. We get to show up as their family today. Y'all for me, the ending of enslavement is about the jubilance and the hope. But we have got to get honest in America. We have got to deal with the truth. We have got to recognize that the way out is back through. If we want to be able to say 
that we are a society that has healed, we have got to be honest about what put us here. Y'all, the truth of the matter is that black, American, black Americans carry the weight of the trauma in their spirits. Who are we? How did we arrive here? Who tore the land in our families? So when I get to walk that three minute walk, when I get to go around that curve and walk upon and walk up to the grave of John and Emily, that's grandma and grandpa to me. And this moment means something to me. This moment I hold dearly. This is my chance to recognize that you gave blood, sweat, and tears. That America would not be America if not for you. Amen. That John and Emily are the beginning of our healing. But we need to recognize that they are, cannot be our end. This cannot be our end. We have got to get honest. I want to wake you up. We have got to get honest. Black Americans don't deserve your pity. Black Americans don't deserve your woes. They deserve you to wake up. They deserve you to recognize your privilege. They deserve for you to recognize how strong and beautiful they are. Because not only are their grandparents responsible for the joys we live out today, they still are. They are our backbones. During the pandemic, they did most of the work. They were our essential workers. We could heal our country in so many meaningful ways if we took the time to invest in actually creating train, change. If we took the time to not only acknowledge Juneteenth as a national holiday, which is important, but we also took the time to invest in black communities. And when I say invest, I mean we give them the money that they are owed and we let them do it for themselves. John and Emily were smiling. They were smiling. In almost every picture we have luckily found, we see him smiling. Did you know he learned to read when he moved here and he loved reading to the folk he came across? He blessed them. Let's bless them. I am so grateful to say that as of now, we've raised over $4,000 to mark their gravestones. I am so proud of that. I am so grateful for all of you because I will be able next year to come back to this spot and I invite you all to come and get to say, John and Emily, I love you. Thank you. So I think my, my misspeak happened earlier because I've been at church all morning. <laughs> Reverend Regis, Regi Bunch is a dear friend of mine and another Disciples of Christ minister who grew up in the Baptist tradition and grew up in a large family, the eighth of nine, mm -hmm. part of, part of a, a singing group that shared the gospel wherever they went. And he continues to do so. He continues to share it through his music. He continues to share it through his preaching. He continues to share it even as this morning I could overhear him teaching my children about the Emancipation Proclamation. And as they continue to learn the importance of the history of Juneteenth so that we can embrace the future of what Juneteenth will continue to mean. This morning, as we were preparing to be here for today, we realized that we were dressed a little bit alike. <laughs> and that uh, you may have noticed that as clergy, we're wearing these stoles. In the church, colors have significance. Not everybody is aware of that, even if we grew up in the church ourselves. Red is a color that represents celebration and new life and new opportunities because it represents the blood, the source of life, right? My stole is interwoven with other colors intentionally 
because in the church, green represents the ordinary, the everyday, and we believe in a creator who takes the ordinary and makes things extraordinary. That is our prayer for today. It is also interwoven with hues of purple and blue, which represent anticipation and a time of waiting. And there are those among us, both living and past, who continue to wait for recognition, to continue to wait for reconciliation, to continue to wait for the kind of harmony and peace that we speak of, that we preach of, that we teach of, but we have yet to bring to fruition. And so it is with anticipation and eagerness that we continue to come forward, acknowledging that there is lifeblood and energy and a sense of purpose that we need to continue to bring to these ministries and missions. And it is with gratitude and humility that I invite forward my dear friend, Reverend Regis Bunch, to share with us a bit about the history and the importance of Juneteenth and uh, his reflections on the day. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It, Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> rather, morning or afternoon, it's just good to be alive and it's good to be here. Ain't that right? Amen. Well, first, giving honor to God, who's the head of my life, and to this team of organizers that have made today a holy day and made the graves of the Hans Parkers sacred. To those organizers, to Ms. Sonny, to all the elected officials and folks who had a hand in making today possible. And for you, the community members, to be here to stand on this mountain and recognize what is taking place. Let's give a hand clap for all of those and for all of us. Today is Juneteenth. Emphasis on the team. Emphasis on the folks that made today possible. We all know about Emancipation Proclamation. Raise your hand if you know about that document. Much like the Constitution, Emancipation Proclamation still was not making black folks free. So in 1863, when Abraham Lincoln signed that Emancipation Proclamation, there were still 260,000, over 260,000 black folks still enslaved in your favorite state, Texas. And then on the heels of the Union Army in June of 1865, June 19th, to be exact, two and a, and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, Juneteenth occurred. What does, what does that mean? The federal government had to come in and literally take enslaved people out of the hands of their masters. Ask your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it's hard to lose control. Tell, tell your neighbor, it's hard to lose control. And that's what Juneteenth is about. Literally taking enslaved folks out of the literal hands of their masters. Because policy doesn't go far enough. The US Constitution was written with the words, all of us are what created what? And what was going on as Thomas Jefferson was pinning those words? They were enslavement. enslavement. When the words on the paper do not matter, but the mouths who do speak up 
matter. That's what Juneteenth is about. The literal unlocking of the chain. The literal taking the hands of someone off of the hands of another. And something transcendent is also happening in that moment. Is that that yearning to be free, to widen the gap from enslavement to freedom, that yearning to be something more freer than we are now still burns deep in our souls. The yearning to be free. The knowing and the wherewithal to know that this, where we are now, is not safe e enough. There's still, what, hands on the hands of others. There's still ch literal chains that need to be unlocked. There are still institutions that make money by putting their hands on black people. There are some things and some yearnings that we need to resolve. As I was thinking about Juneteenth and planning my reflection, a familiar passage of scripture came up for me in the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter. And Jesus tells townspeople of that day the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl once you find it you sell all you have to get it a hidden treasure in a field as I think about the Hans Parkers, as Sister Sunny said, and, and her name is so fitting because her name is about the sun and shining light in dark and unforeseen places. But a hidden treasure in a field is what we are experiencing to, today. That the Hans Parkers who were buried here and are now found and we can recognize their name it's also making this ground holy and sacred ground. Because they were buried in, not only in the cemetery, but buried in Cuyahoga Falls. That there's still some hidden treasures that still have to be found. Not just the Hans Parkers, but we gotta find a way to make Society safe so people like Hans Parkers can exist with their full lives. We got to find the hidden treasures. Akron right now is digging for a new police chief. Since February, thinking that is the answer to safety. But the hidden treasure that's in this field is letting us know that in order to make this society safe, we need mental health treatment centers. Yep. We need access to affordable housing. Yep. We need access to what? Health care yep. as a human right. Yeah, this is gonna get political, y'all. <laughs> Juneteenth is a political day. <laughs> in order for us to get free, we have to call the demon by name. Don't just call the liberal, just don't call the demon a liberal. Name what that liberal is doing and name what that conservative is doing. Because we get so lost in the message, we don't see the impact of the policies. What, what, what am I trying to say is, your favorite Democrat and your favorite Republican are both pushing poverty. But unless we don't stand up and say something, We'll say, oh, the next president will do it. Oh, this is not our generation. But we are about 
digging and fighting the hidden treasures of truth and justice, not just for Cuyahoga Falls, but for the state of Ohio and for the United States of America. The name of Hans Parker is a treasure that will forever shine the light of justice in this state. Amen. And lastly, before I leave, I was hanging out with Reverend Debbie's children. And an illustration got in my heart about the hidden treasure. There's a story about a mother and her son going off to the bank. And before the mother could get inside the door, someone had came by and snatched her envelope out of her hand. And her son, being so upset in his shockness, wanted to run after the person who took her mother's envelope. And the mother told the son, you don't have to run after that man. But the young man said, well, I am young enough and I feel like I got the energy to do it. Why won't you let me run after that individual? And the mother reached down into her secret place, you know. <laughs> secret place <laughs> and she pulled out the check that was in her secret place <laughs> and what's the point of that story is that this gravesite is all but an envelope the treasure the Hans Parkers are not in some grave somewhere. The Hans Parkers are not in some casket somewhere. But the treasure that they have for you and for the rest of this world should be deep in your secret place, deep in your heart. When you leave here, a piece of the Hans Parkers should be leaving with you. A piece of what they had to show and bring to the world, even though it was covered up. And now Sister Sunny has shined some light on it. Put that treasure in your secret place. So that when you go and have to show the world what justice looks like, you don't have to chase after the congressperson. You don't have to chase after the politician. You don't have to chase after corporate America. Just reach down in your own heart and show the world what that treasure is. Amen. And that's a better world for everybody else. God bless you. And may God ever keep you in God's name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I want to, we need to really thank um, the Cuyahoga Falls Historical Society president, Jerry Holland is the, Wilcox Holland is the reason we're here. She did all this amazing work to be able to tell their story in a way where we can contribute it to them in this way. And so I am so grateful that she brought me onto this project. I had no idea that I had a late, 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 maybe one more late grandpa and grandma <laughs> living here breathing amongst us and giving me the will to live. So I am so grateful for her. We will hear more from her now. I don't know how I'm gonna follow the last speakers, but I'm gonna give you some information on the Hans Parkers so we all know more about them. Recently, I was at the Historical Society board meeting and someone brought up an old African proverb as long as you speak my name, I shall live forever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
It immediately made me think of those buried here in unmarked, long forgotten graves. Two of those belongs, belong to John and Emily Hans Parker, who are we are here to commemorate today. John Hans Parker was born into slavery in May of 1836. We do not have details of his life of enslavement, but we do know soon after the Civil War that John began a life of freedom here in Cuyahoga Falls. Our first record of him in the area is a marriage certificate to Emmeline J. Hopp. Emily, a biracial woman, was also born in enslavement in 1847 in Missouri. It appears that they met here in 1865 or 66, and they married November 19, 1867. On the marriage document, it was added in ink specifying that they were colored. As deplorable as that sounds, it's lucky for me and those of us researching that we were able to find them that way. At the bottom of John, the bottom of the marriage certificate, John's signature was needed, but not knowing how to, uh, not knowing how to read or write, he signed his name with an X. Back in captivity, I can't read my phone very well. Back in captivity, education was not permitted. Our research shows that both stayed employed throughout their lives. John working at the Falls Rivet Works as well as groundskeeper. And, and Porter. Emily was employed as a laundress. They lived in a small cottage in, well, house in 325 South Front Street, which is near the Sheridan. The Hans Parkers seemed to live in harmony with other well known Fallsites like the Browns, Priors, Rothigs, and Sills. When they were first married, they boarded with Gordon Meehan. Hold me up here. I have a fractured. Uh, pelvis, so I'm kind of. I can read it from the chair. I'm sorry. As a barber, Gordon was able to support the John and Emily Hans Parker until they got on their feet. They, in turn, took boarders throughout their lifetime to assist other African Americans in Cog Falls and Akron. As I stated earlier, the enslaved population were not permitted to read and write, but later in life, John Hans Parker learned to read. As Sonny said earlier, he practiced reading with the neighborhood children who were very fond of him. We found that information on the back of a photograph that was found in the basement of the library. We are lucky to have several smiling photographs of John posing for the camera and while working as a groundskeeper. Just two days ago, an additional photo was found of John working at the prior home located at 4th Street and Portage. It was a magnificent find and on the back of the photo, a new piece of information was found. His nickname was Moses. While I believe there's a story behind the name, we unfortunately will probably never know it. John Hans Parker lived a full life and died in 1906 or early 1907 at the age of 71. Emily Hans Parker died as a widow just months later on September 12, 1907, at the age of 60. Both were buried along with the Helen Hans Parker in Oakwood Cemetery. Helen is possibly a young child of theirs or perhaps a child from John's life of enslavement. Their graves right here along with all but one of their early, I'm sorry, their graves right here remain unmarked. Research continues for everyone else buried in these two sections of the cemetery, but right now we want to commemorate and memorialize John and Emily Hans Parker with a beautiful stone. With today's ceremony and the coming memorial stone, I believe the old adage will come true for John and Emily. As you, as long as you speak my name, I will live forever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've got just a few more speakers. The next one we have is Miss Cummings. She is a lifelong resident of Akron, Ohio. I don't even know how we met, but I'm so grateful we met. Um, she has been active in the community, and what I love about her is she's trying to rebuild and uplift. That is her whole motto. She has, tried, she has experienced systemic racism from both sides and offers a unique and insightful perspective into the issues plaguing the black community. Plus, she dresses so fiercely. Please, please come on up, Mrs. Kim. Oh, and she's a mommy and has a graduate who is having a party today. Yes. Hello, hello, 
everyone. How are you? So, forgive me while I look at my notes on my phone. My name is Tamara Cummings, and I am here representing the Final Farewell Project. We have partnered with this amazing cause, and we're a small local nonprofit. We're based out of Akron. We help indigent and low-income families with burial costs um, and the fees associated with all of that. So we are really excited to kick off this fundraiser and partner with this amazing cause. Um, this is really just honoring and just very humbling to be asked to speak here today because when I think about this, like, <laughs> it's so close to my mouth. <laughs> Okay, there's still COVID though. Um, when I think about the sacrifices and struggles our ancestors made for us to be able to stand here today, I'm saddened but yet encouraged. Because although Hans Parker did not march across the Selma Bridge with Martin Luther King and John Lewis for civil rights, they remain heroes nonetheless. Their fight for our rights was silent, full of unbelievable suffering, and filled with pain, tragedy, and abuse. The story of the, Af of the African American in the United States is riddled with tragedy. Year after year, decade after decade, institutions have found ways to keep African Americans oppressed. But year after year, decade after decade, the same man has found ways to overcome each and every obstacle that has been put in his way. Quite a few of our ancestors lost our lives in the fight for equality and justice. It is our responsibility to pick up where they left off to continue uplifting and empowering our community, as well as speaking out and fighting against the system that was created to destroy us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, for clarity, when I was saying amen earlier, I'm gonna keep bringing church back. And I know that's not for everybody, but that's why I'm clarifying. Amen just means let it be so. So when you hear prophets speaking up here, when you hear our legislators speaking up here, when you hear historians speaking facts to future up here, that's why we say amen is because we're saying let, let it, it be, be so. so. Let it be so. All right. Amen. Amen. So we're going to invite our next speaker to come up as well. Representative Tavia Galonski represents the 35th House District in Akron. She has lived all over this country from Florida to Los Angeles. She has flown this country as uh, a flight attendant and for Delta where she worked to help unionize working for representation even in her earliest beginnings she continued to work full time even while attending the University of Akron School of Law where she was a Dean's Club Scholar and when she graduated, she uh, started as a staff attorney with Western Reserve Legal Services where she represented low income clients in both domestic relations and juvenile courts. This woman has continued to elevate herself and others to continue to build platforms and to provide them in offering for brothers and sisters everywhere she has lived and served. And so we are grateful for this sibling in service in all of the ways that she continues to represent herself well, to represent her communities with remarkable poise and articulation. And we are proud to have her here today. Would you please join me in welcoming Representative Tavia Golovsky. Thank you so much. And after a person does an introduction like that, you feel a little, you, well, I feel a lot, very humbled, but also really grateful. I, I want to leave you with one thing, and I see so many friends in the audience. I work for you. So the 35th House District is actually Firestone Park, USA, where I live, Goodyear Heights, Ellet, Kenmore, and almost the whole city of Barberton. But you're lucky today because you have your representative in the house. He wandered back to the back there, but I saw him. Casey Weinstein is here. And 
We work for you. We do what you need, when you need it, and all you've got to do is contact us. That's how I got here today. Now, I was in the back on another Zoom call also celebrating Juneteenth, but I said, I'm going to be here because they asked me to be here to say a few things. So, anyone in the audience ever love somebody, you know, just as much as you possibly could, and then they passed away? All right. Which one of you would not want to have a marker for that loved one? I know nobody's gonna raise their hands. I know you won't. And why is that? Because one of the ways that we do, part of our American tradition, part of our human tradition, part of our Ohio tradition is, the way that we recognize our loved ones is with a marker, right? A gravesite. So that's why we're here today, the hand sparkers. I never even heard of them before Miss Holland did all that work and all that detective work, detective work to find out who, who they were. And what we find out is that they're here. They're right here on this hollow ground, buried but not marked. And so it's important to mark them just like you would your loved ones. Can I just tell you how, how happy and satisfied I am to have seen so many of you all come out today in communion. We're together. We're not against each other. We're not fighting. We're not in strife. I've seen a number of smiles, and I've seen some children back there playing like nobody's business, <laughs> loving on each other. And that's what this is all about. When you hear talk coming in the coming months about divisive rhetoric and so-and-so, and divisive language being taught to our kids, our kids don't look mad today because they know what we're doing. You explained it. You're their parents, their guardians, their custodians, their grandparents. You explained what this was about. And they didn't say, I don't want to go because I'm going to feel bad about myself. What they said was, okay, let's go. We're going to celebrate, we're going to commemorate our history. Amen. It's all of us. You heard the stories about how I've lived all over. And I've met some wonderful people. And when you try to come together as community, you can't fail. And that's what we've done here today. And so believe in it. Believe that history can be something that you, you reflect on, you read it, right? You understand it, make sure to get the facts right. And then when you're done with that, you don't go, you, I mean, you might cry a few tears if something's horrible, true, right? But you say to yourselves, I wanna make a better place. I want to create a better community. And when I look at you all today, I see that and I'm delighted. Um, I don't know if we gave a shout out to, to Councilwoman Sims was here. Um, oh, there she is right there. Thank you. And that's, we're all people who work for you. And so I'm thankful to the mayor. I'm thankful again to Ms. Holland, particular uh, Kenyona Sunny Matthews. Now, part of continuing to work for you is, and I don't know if a lot of you know this, but as state representatives, if you ask us to, because each of you have important loved ones in your life. If you ask us to, we can light, write a letter of commemoration, a condolence letter about your loved one. And that's just a way to say they were somebody. Right. The hand sparkers were men, right. women. They loved people. They lived a long life. They were hard workers and they were buried here. And that's all it would be is a letter of condolence. You can reach out to us. That's just part of the work we do. But all of the work we do is for you, and I just want to encourage you all that that's something we can do. I put a little something down here on paper for today, but just because a little thing called a federal holiday came up today, didn't it? <laughs> and I got asked, is this something to be happy about or sad about? Well, you know what? I don't want to be sad. That's right. I don't want to be mad. I love each and every one of you out there, and I want to bring that forward. And so what I'll say today is that, and again, none of us could have planned this, but on this, the 19th day of June, 2021, which is the first time Juneteenth is celebrated as a national holiday, we do hereby remember the hand sparkers. Thank you. I appreciate everybody being accommodating as other folks are coming through to celebrate and acknowledge their loved ones. So thank you for that and being mindful. We have one more speaker today and uh, as we invite him to come forward, I also wanna thank those of you that have continued to make 
financial contributions to this cause because um, we want there to be something tangible here, right? Something that others can continue to come back to so that they can see their past and celebrate their future. So just amongst you all today, we've collected another uh, just over $180. So thank you. All of that will go towards creating um, markers for the stones, for the hand spakers. Um, we can uh, certainly pass the basket again. I have no problem doing that. Uh, but if, if you um, or someone you know would like to contribute in future going forward from this event, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, to Sunny or myself or to any of the other organizers. That's a fabulous sound. <laughs> Sonny, someone asked an excellent question. Online, there is a GoFundMe page. And if you look up the Hand Sparker fundraiser on GoFundMe, you should be able to find and be able to donate on there. If there's, they are asking for a tip at the bottom for GoFundMe. You can move the dial all the way down to zero if you don't want to donate to them, and then all the rest of the money, except for maybe three percent, goes to us or the Hand Sparkers, I should say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, cash and check, don't take 3% out, just so you know. We would like to welcome our final speaker today, Reverend Raymond E. Green, Jr. He is the founding executive director of the Freedom Block, the founding director of the Freedom Rock, and field director for Black Fork Strategies and has been working as an organizer and electoral operative in Ohio for more than 15 years. He has founded grassroots organizations such as My Brother's Keeper in Northeast Ohio that focused on training and supporting formerly incarcerated men, served as a pastor of a local church, and has worked as an organizer and field staff for the Ohio Organizing Collaborative and Stand Up for Ohio. He has held almost every position in an electoral program from canvasser, phone bank lead, directing a local office, regional director, statewide program director, including leading a registration program that successfully registered over 140,000 voters. This is a man for us to listen to. This is a man who has words of wisdom for how we can take passion to action. And so I hope we will open once more our ears and our hearts and our minds for the word he has to share. If you would come forward, please, Reverend. Thank you, Thank you all, good afternoon. Um, I often find it um, comical when people ask me to speak, um, they often send you this thing about what the event is about, um, and then they tell you, you got two, or four, two to four minutes. And I always reply back, did you, you know I'm a pastor, right? Um, but I'm gonna do my best today. We are in, a, in the middle of a dangerous intersection. Um, and let's just be honest, I'm gonna just start off this being honest. Everybody's not happy about this event. Um, so I'm gonna be before you brief. Um, um, I am Ray Green Jr. I am the executive director of the Freedom Block in Akron, Ohio, covering black communities throughout the state of Ohio. Um, it is a pleasure uh, to be here with you all on this momentous occasion. Um, I thank all of the event planners of this event. Uh, my good friend, Sunny, uh, who's always on the front lines. When I met Sunny, she told me she lived in Cargill Falls and, and the work that she was doing, it was just amazing to me. Um, y'all all know y'all nickname. 
and, and Sunny is far from that. <laughs> um, so it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to honor, um, pay tribute to the Hands Parkers um, in our tradition, um, the Black diaspora. Um, they would no longer be the Hands Parkers. They would be Mama and Papa H. Um, so that's what I'm going to refer to them as, Mama and, and Papa H. Um, it, 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 it is a great pleasure to be here. Um, this is firstly, officially first recognized Juneteenth um, by our federal government and the country as a whole. Um, it is ironic okay. that we do this in Chicago Falls, um, a place where even today, or as recent as the year of 2000, um, there were less than a thousand black people residing in Chicago Falls, a place that was once a sundown town and that as recently as 95, 96, fought to ensure the delay of building the Pleasant Meadows because it was thought, it was thought to be a home for black people and poor white people. But as we honor the hands of today, it's equally, equally ironic that we do it at a time that we're talking about nationally, about banning American history, eliminating the contributions of black people to the proposed legislation of the banning of critical race theory, which let's just be honest, that is American history. It is so important that we use today as a catalyst for continuous change that today not only leads to an awareness of the contributions and degradation of all of our ancestors, but that it leads us to a unified fight of universal health care, yeah. universal child care, a true living wage, a more humane justice system, and an educational system based on facts, based on facts of American history. And that allows us to prepare our children for a more humane and mentally stable life. We must continue to honor our ancestors by acknowledging the harm while preparing for a better tomorrow. We must continue to be pioneers of our own destiny and break down barriers for our future generations. We must examine the past, foresee the future, and lay the foundation for a better tomorrow. And we must do it with love and with grace. I can almost guarantee for all my millennials out there in the next five or 10 years from now, the research will show that in 2021, Juneteenth was the most Googled word. <laughs> Therefore, while states like South Carolina, Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, North Dakota, Iowa, Idaho, and 11 other states are voting for bills banning critical race theory in primary and secondary schools and or college universities because it undermines American values. We have not only today the opportunity, not only the duty, but the privilege right. to redefine exactly what American values look like, right. yeah. feel like, yeah. taste like, right. and smell like. We are, you are, this coalition of black, white, young, and old people. We are the ones that are standing on the shoulders of our ancestors and continue to fight for freedom and liberation. Understanding that freedom and liberation is not going to be given to us. But together in love and in grace, we can take it and create a place where all folks are loved and treated with dignity and respect, Respect, even in Cahawka Falls. And finally, this tombstone that will be placed for the Mama and Papa H is the beginning of reparations for my people we no longer stand by and decide whether or not black people and descendants of slaves deserve reparations for the torture and humility that we have suffered and continue to suffer in this country. But now we must move to repair that harm through monetary settlements, land, a revamped education system, health care for all, child care for all, and honest pay for honest day's work. We must begin the fight to defund the police and reallocate resources inside of our communities. The fight continues in unity, in peace, and in love. I say thank you all for being here, and let the fight continue. Thank you for coming. I want to say one thing, and then we're going to do something that's really special for you. I am so grateful that you all took the time to not only be here, to not only make this gift happen. I am so grateful that you took the time to acknowledge the papa and uh, grandma as we have decided to call them. Because they are not only my ancestors, they are your ancestors. And so we are going to honor them with a silent processional. 
We will walk to their gravesite where we will hang these baskets. These baskets will remain there until we are able to find and put up finally their gravestones. And y'all, we are so close. So we will share once more the GoFundMe on our Facebook event page. Share it far and wide. We've got people from California donating. This is our chance to reconcile our racial, heal uh, racial healing in our country. We need a total of $6,000. So we only need about like 2,000. So we can do this, we can do this. I might be calling to see if I can get a discount. But we can do this one way or the other. We will get those gravestones. So I ask that you will follow my friend, line up as we will walk in silence and take this time to think